Pioneer's marketing would have you believe that this is the most premium Windows handheld in existence. And you know what? They might be right. This is the first handheld I've tried where I have very minimal notes for feedback. It's the first time where everything comes together and it feels like all the hardware and software nearly justifies the price tag. And you know what else? This is the first time I find myself picking something up other than the Steam Deck. The Aya Neo 2 and by extension the Aya Neo Geek feels like the first true contender. And that's kind of the short version of my review. If you get nothing else from this video, let me make these two points. Number one, I feel like this has the battery life, performance, and screen quality to be a true 1200p handheld. And number two, if you told me this handheld was made by like Logitech or Razer or Corsair, I'd believe you. I do have some negative notes and we'll get into that as part of the full review here. But that said, it's still impossible to match the value of a Steam Deck, assuming you live in a part of the world where you can get one. Dollar for dollar, you can't beat the Steam Deck. But what Ioneo did is what I've been looking for someone to do instead, and that's go above and beyond and make a handheld that feels premium in every way in order to justify the price tag. The Ioneo 2 is the most successful at this strategy that I've seen so far. And like I said, it needs to be in order for people to have a reason to pick one of these up. If you were lucky enough to be an early bird funder, you got one for as low as $750, but if you're buying one now, you're going to be paying anywhere between $850 to $1550. As usual, there are a ton of options for your purchase. If you pick up the Ioneo 2, you can get one of four styles, a sleek black, an equally sleek white. Both of those kind of remind me of the Wii U in aesthetic, but they don't scuff like the Wii U did. There's also the retro power style, which is inspired by the original Game Boy and the really playful B-Duck variety. I love that one. They're also selling a version of this hardware they're calling the INEO Geek. It's meant to be the more affordable option with an early bird price as low as $750. That comes in two styles, either the Fantasy Black or the Crystal Purple, with the latter having more customization options. A lot of these specs for the Geek and the Neo 2 are somewhat similar, but the Neo 2 is the one that brings you more of that premium feel with stuff like better vibration motors, theoretically faster read and write speeds on the storage, improved gyro capabilities, and a nicer screen. Of course, I don't have the Geek, so I can't tell you how much of that is like marketing, but I can say that the Neo 2 is impressive. Of course, since I have the Neo 2, the rest of the video is going to focus on that, but you can go to the IA websites in the description if you want to learn more about the Geek. The last thing with regard to purchasing one of these is that there are a few options for extras. You can get a basic accessory package with a storage bag, a screen protector, all the way up to a deluxe accessory package that comes with an 8-bit dough controller, a docking station, customized carrying case, as well as some sort of brooch. So that is pretty cool. The important thing about the dock is that it does support USB 4.0 interface, so you can theoretically connect an external GPU, which could potentially make this a serious contender for being the handheld that becomes your main rig when you dock it. Also with the dock, these devices have a USB-C port on the bottom, so you really can just dock it as opposed to the setup that Steam Deck has where you have to connect the cable. So yeah, like I said, you will need to put at least 850 down to pick one of these up, but let's see what you get when it's delivered. Thanks to Aya for sending this over, by the way, what they've sent me is a media sample and it may differ a bit from the final mass production units, but even here, the packaging is above and beyond other handhelds. It's got helpful instruction manuals for the device, and manuals for the IS software as well. It's got some extra accessories like international outlet adapters, as well as USB-C to USB-A adapters. It also comes with the 65 watt PD charger and picking up the device, it feels great. It does feel quite big. The size rivals that of the Steam Deck, even though there are no trackpads and the controls overall do take up a lot less space. This works well for me though, as someone who had a tough time using the Ioneo Air Pro, but if you prefer smaller devices, then this may not be for you. It's a little lighter than the Steam Deck, but it feels a little heavier in the hands. Similarly, the grips are nice, and even though they're not as pronounced as the Steam Deck, I found the ergonomics of this to be pretty great. Overall, both the Steam Deck and Neo 2 were equivalent in terms of comfort for longer sessions. The plastic on the case feels soft and natural. In the marketing for the Neo 2, they make a big deal about the fact that you can't see any of the screws, and by now I've seen Taki Udon's review on the device, and I agree with Taki's take that this is unnecessary. You see, the screws are under these side panels and trying to remove these panels proved to be frustrating for Taki. I'd much rather have ease of access than the purported elegance of hiding the screws. On the other hand, there is one feature designed for elegance that I really like. There's a glass panel that covers almost the entire front face of the device, including the screen itself. It adds to the luxury feel without taking anything away. So far, Aya Neo hasn't skimped on anything for the Neo 2 and the ports on this guy are just another example of that. Starting with 
the top of the Neo 2 and going from left to right, there's a fingerprint sensor, volume rocker, a microphone, two USB-C ports sandwiching the power LED, and finally the fan exhaust vent. On the bottom, there's another microphone, a third USB-C port, a slot for an SD card, and a headphone jack. The speakers are also down here, and while I think I would have preferred front firing speakers, the audio on the Neo 2 was impressive to say the least. In general, the controls feel incredibly good. The D-pad has a pivot and it played great with 2D platformers as well as fighting games. I was able to pull off focus attack dash cancels in Street Fighter 4, and I had a great time with platformers like Celeste and Bleed where the diagonals are really important. One minor complaint about the controls is that my thumb sometimes bumped up against the right analog stick. I experienced this with a game called K's and the Wild Masks where I would dash with X and then while I'm still holding X I would press A to jump. The way my hand was positioned as I went to press A with the middle of my thumb would make it bump up against the analog stick and that was kind of annoying. Pretty minor, but still annoying. With regard to the rest of the controls, the buttons have a nice feel to them. They have some cushion to the press, but they don't feel mushy. It just takes a slight bit more force to actuate it than you might think. Same goes for the bumpers. The triggers have plenty of travel to them, and I really like them for playing racers. Select and start are on the bottom left. And then as usual, there are some buttons for navigating windows. There's the Aya button that brings up the Aya space app or control panel. There's a show desktop button to the right of that. And there are these programmable LC and RC buttons. I found these to be incredibly helpful since they basically give you four additional windows actions. More on that later. The analog sticks are hall sensor sticks, and that means there are two significant benefits. The first is a vastly reduced dead zone, usually no dead zone at all. And the second is that they are effectively immune to joystick drift, so they should last much longer than other modern analog sticks. They're concave, so my finger rests nicely on the surface. As for the specs of the Neo 2, the CPU in this device is the AMD 6800U, which is currently the most powerful APU on the market. It's a Zen 3 CPU with RDNA 2 graphics. That means the ability to play powerhouses like Red Dead Redemption 2, Miles Morales, Elden Ring, God of War, and almost whatever your heart desires. Of course, the concern with playing those games is the power draw. Still though, the Neo 2 fares better than the One X Player Mini Pro, and one reason for that is the 50.25 watt hour battery. In theory, that's not much more than the 45 watt hour in the Mini Pro, but in practice, that little bit goes a long way, and I would say that 50 watt hours is really the minimum size battery you're gonna want for a 6800U. Outside of the APU and the battery, here are the rest of the specs. You've got a seven inch 1200P display. For storage, you can get 512 gigabytes, one terabyte or two terabyte, and that's NVMe 2280 over a PCIe 4.0 bus and for memory you have the option of 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM. For connectivity this comes with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. So let's talk about this screen because despite not being an OLED it's really a major selling point and probably the star of this particular handheld. This is a 1200p 7 inch IPS display. It has a portrait orientation which comes with its own idiosyncrasies but those are increasingly minor these days. As for brightness this gets a strong 400 nits. It performs pretty well on a bright day. I definitely expected this screen to get a lot more glare than it actually does but the reason the screen is so impressive is the wide range of color. The colors are bright but don't appear to be oversaturated or blown out to my layman eye. To be blunt, it's gorgeous. It does justice to beautiful games that themselves have a wide range of color, games like Ori, Will of the Wisps, Grease, Cuphead, Hack, and Cult of the Lamb. They really pop on this device. I don't have any real tools for measuring latency, but I was able to beat tough Cuphead levels and Elden Ring bosses just fine, so take that for what you will. The screen can get as bright as my 512GB Steam Deck, but the Steam Deck can get much dimmer, which I know is important to a lot of you. Similarly, the speakers were really high quality. The Steam Deck is another handheld with excellent speakers, and to be honest, I thought it still performed better than the Neo 2. The Steam Deck was just clear to me, and the Neo 2 had a slight tinniness to it. I also prefer the front firing speakers of the deck. Still, the Neo 2 beats out basically every other handheld on the market that I've tried, including the One X Player Mini Pro and Aya Neo's own Air Pro. Take a listen. The 
the last thing to mention about the audiovisual quality is how the fan affects your listening experience. Overall, it was much quieter than any other 6800U handheld I've tried, but unsurprisingly, it was still louder than the Steam Deck. I wouldn't say it affected my gaming experience, but it was absolutely audible and could get loud when under lots of load. When I played this handheld in bed, my wife didn't mention the fan at all, but she did make a comment about the rumble and the button presses, so those were louder than the fan. Aya has been packaging their handhelds with their custom software and it gets better with each new handheld, both in overall stability as well as enhanced features. In all honesty, it still needs plenty of work, but it's nonetheless impressive that they're building up this suite of software that makes gaming and Windows a lot more convenient than it was just one year ago. You can open up the control panel of this app by pressing the Aya button and you can pull up the full app by holding the Aya button. There's a game library aggregator, and this is the least important part of the software for me. I have other aggregators that work better than this, and now that Deck UI is available in Windows, I don't have much of a reason to use this to manage my game library. You can set the TDP from here, and I'll get to that in the next segment of this video. You can also set the fan speed from here, and I generally stick to the default for this. The meat and potatoes for this app is in the Assistant tab. You can calibrate and configure lots of details about the built-in controls. For example, you can configure the LEDs around the analog sticks, enable turbo button presses, swap the A, B, and X, Y buttons to be Nintendo style. You can also configure vibration levels or gyroscope functionality. One complaint about vibration is that you can't just turn it off at the system level. That almost seems like an oversight. I wish you were able to turn it off completely. My wife made a comment about the noise from the rumble and I ended up turning it off in the game only for it to rumble again when I changed games. And then with regard to gyro, you can't map the gyro to mouse input, which was frustrating since it really limits how you can use it. It effectively means you can't do flick stick, which is a bummer for me personally. You can use an app called Handheld Companion to get around this, but if I'm replacing Aya software with other software, what's the point of it in the first place? Also in the assistant tab here is an application center, which allows you to download what are effectively additional plugins for Aya space. For example, they have their new smart TDP app that you can download from here. It lets you set a target frame rate and it will adjust the TDP, CPU clocks, and GPU clocks to get you that frame rate as efficiently as possible. And that's really cool. These apps are going to be helpful and are going to be the place to go for all the additional functionality that I is creating, but I didn't get a chance to try them out very much personally. Finally, you can configure those LC and RC buttons for actions like pulling up Task Manager, pulling up Steam, closing the active app, or bringing up the on-screen keyboard. You can set an action for pressing either button or holding either button so you have access to four different actions. The control panel version of this app is nice because it gives you access to the TDP controls, the fan controls, it gives you some performance info at a glance, and you can set up shortcuts for things like FSR, muting audio, or taking a screenshot. Overall, IS Space is handy, but not perfect. It can sometimes be buggy, and the options for Gyro are lacking compared to Steam Input, but again, this is a lot of progress in the last year, and they have big plans for more progress in the future. When it comes to performance, only the Steam Deck compares to the 6800U. The Steam Deck is more efficient than the 6800U and therefore has better performance at low wattage, but the 6800U has the same RDNA 2 architecture and allows twice as much power to go to the CPU, resulting in a power ceiling that can be 25-50% to 50 higher depending on the game. So you can fine tune the TDP from 4 watts all the way up to 33 watts, but the Aya Neo 2 does have some really smart presets. Those presets are 22 15 and 11 watts. Each of these presets is viable in some scenarios, but I spent most of my time between 15 and 22. Pro mode is where you go to fine tune the TDP, and most of the time I left this at 18 watts right between 15 and 22. Here are some 800p benchmarks across the TDPs I tested most commonly, and here are some 1200p benchmarks. Generally speaking, I like to play at the native resolution of a device, like to my eye, 800p on the Steam Deck just looks a lot better than 800p on the Aya Neo 2. I don't know if that's just me, but anyway, I spent most of my time on the Aya Neo 2 at 1200p. So if you compare the Aya Neo 2 at 1200p to the Steam Deck at 800p, you'll probably need to turn down the settings a bit for the Aya Neo 2 or deal with a slightly lower frame rate. But overall, I personally had a great time playing most games at 1200p. I mostly stayed between 15 and 22 watts, and generally speaking, my battery life was similar to the Steam Deck with about one and a half to two hours on high-end games like Elden Ring. Elden Ring specifically is a game I played a lot of on here. I left the settings on default and, and played at 1200p. With that setup, it's not nearly as smooth as the Steam Deck was at 800p, but it was pretty to look at and I had no problems beating the stuff you come across in the first 30 hours of the game. So how does this all shape up for the two handhelds here? Here's a quick overview. 
If we're taking all of this at face value, then the Steam Deck sort of edges out the IN Neo 2, but let's get into each category. First of all, of course, is the price. The Steam Deck is between $400 and $650, and the starting price for the IN Neo 2 is $850. That's a big disparity and certainly the first thing for most people to consider. One thing I don't have here is availability. The Steam Deck is only available in limited, whereas the Neo 2 is available for purchase worldwide. In any case, I'm not setting a winner for price because the question is whether or not the device warrants its price tag. Then there are things like support, both from Valve and the community. I think support from Valve could be better than it is, but realistically speaking, they're in a position to provide better support than INEO, GPD, and One Netbook. Similarly, the Steam Deck has over a million users and a bigger community, which means you get a lot more help. As for the build quality, the INEO 2 is a gorgeous piece of kit, whereas the Steam Deck, on the other hand, is a more practical handheld where form follows function. To be fair to the Neo 2, though, it still nails most of the functionality too. The build quality feels equivalent, but I'm actually giving the nod to the Steam Deck for repairability. Ionia went for the elegant solution, but I like that the screws are visible and easy to get to on the Steam Deck. The INEO 2 controls are very near perfect for standard controls. My only complaint was a D-pad placement. Other than that, the D-pad itself is better, the buttons are better, and the analog sticks are hall sensor, which offers some longevity compared to the Steam Deck. Still though, because of the D-pad placements, the lack of trackpads and paddles, and the substandard gyro implementation, I still prefer the Steam Deck when it comes to controls. The screens are the same size, but the resolution and therefore pixel density of the Neo 2 is higher. Additionally, this screen just looks plain better than the Steam Deck screen. I'm not an expert in color accuracy, but this screen is a lot more vibrant and colorful. I imagine you'd be hard pressed to find anyone that says the screen quality on the Neo 2 is not better than the Steam Deck, so I'm giving the Neo 2 the nod. The audio quality is one category where it's really, really close, but the Steam Deck gets the edge. I prefer the front firing speakers and the sound is just a little bit clearer on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is only a little bit bigger and overall the ergonomics of both devices are pretty similar. There is my complaint about the D-pad, but I already covered that in controls, so I'm going to say the ergonomics are a tie. When it comes to software, the Steam Deck's operating system is superior to Windows when it comes to just playing games. INEO is trying to close the gap with their own custom software, but it's still lagging behind quite a bit. The advantage that the Neo 2 does have, however, is that it is inherently better with game compatibility thanks to Windows 11. I can play any cheat games here with no problem. To state the obvious, you can install Windows 11 on a Steam Deck, but if I compare Windows on Deck to Windows on Neo 2, then Neo 2 wins. So I'm calling it a tie because this depends entirely on your preference. I'm not playing a bunch of anti-cheat games, so I personally go for the Steam Deck 99% of the time, but again, it just depends on what you do. With regard to performance, the Steam Deck is the more efficient handheld, and it has better performance than the INEO 2 when played below 12 watts. The Neo 2, though, has a much higher ceiling with the ability to go all the way up to 33 watts. This leads to major gains, so overall I have to give this one to the Neo 2. Battery life is surprisingly close thanks to the 50 watt hour battery in the Neo 2 compared to the 40 watt hour battery on the Steam Deck. 50 watt hour really feels like the minimum size battery you can pair with the 6800U, and anything smaller should pretty much be disregarded. If you play at 15 watts, this battery will last longer than the Steam Deck, so I'm tempted to give the edge to the Neo 2, but if you tend to play indies and games that run under 12 watts, then the Steam Deck is the winner. So this is another tie. One place where the Neo 2 is more practical than the Steam Deck is when it comes to I.O. The Neo 2 is loaded to the brim with things like dual mics and three USB-C ports, whereas the Steam Deck has more of a philosophy of only giving you what is absolutely necessary. I and Neo 2 takes the win in this category. So the Steam Deck gets a big win in support, but all the other wins like build quality controls and audio quality, those are small wins. The Neo 2 gets W's for screen, performance, and I.O. The ergonomics, battery life, and software is sort of a tie depending on what kind of gamer you are. This is as close as any handheld has gotten to being reasonably competitive to the Steam Deck despite being hundreds of dollars more expensive. At this point, you hopefully know which of these two is more appealing to you. The Steam Deck is a handheld that feels like it was made specifically for me given how enthusiastic I am about things like Steam Input, and I know that a lot of you feel the exact same way, but the Aya Neo 2 feels like the first handheld I could reasonably see myself choosing to use over the Steam Deck in certain scenarios. I can't say whether it's worth 
several hundred dollars more than a Steam Deck. Plus, we all know that Valve has quite the advantage of not relying on the margins of their niche handheld to survive as a company. But I can say that iNeo 2 really goes the extra mile to justify its price tag. It's the impressive combination of picking the right hardware components and developing custom software to make the ultimate Windows gaming handheld so far. It was better than my time with other 6800U handhelds like the One X Player Mini Pro and the AOK Zoe A1. It had better efficiency compared to both, resulting in a lower overall power draw. It also had much better battery life than the Mini Pro and much better controls than the A1. Not to mention everything about it feels much more premium, including the screen and speakers, all while staying at a relatively similar price or even cheaper than those two. Given the similarity in price, but the difference in features, I find it hard to recommend anything other than the Neo 2 if you're in the market for a 6800U handheld that ships in the next month or so. That said, I've seen the reviews of the GPD Win 4 and I'd love to give that a shot too. But as of right now, this is the best handheld that has the most powerful APU on the market. It's not the pound for pound champ because I still give that to the Steam Deck personally, but it's the best in this heavyweight class. Hopefully you've enjoyed this comprehensive review and in-depth comparison. Be sure to leave a like if you did and feel free to leave a dislike if you weren't feeling it. Neo Gang out. Goodbye.